This is lesson one for module five, the grid, part one. In this lecture, I will discuss the power plant and its transmission lines, towers, and poles, also substations, distribution lines, the purpose of the utility transformer, protection and monitoring of the grid, lineman and lineman personnel's involvement with wind farm installations, and how power is delivered to homes and industries. As discussed at the beginning of this course, power plants burn immense amounts of coal as a source of energy. To put this in perspective, a coal-fired power plant burns about 20 or more million pounds of coal each day during peak seasons. Another source used is natural gas, which is a somewhat cleaner alternative to coal, but is less abundant. Peaking systems are used to provide additional power to the grid when needed, but require natural gas. Here there are multiple peaking generators. Transmission lines, towers, and poles. Power from the plant is fed to nearby areas by use of distribution lines, substations, and other utility lines. Power from the plant, needed further away, is stepped up in voltage and gets delivered to distant power substations using transmission lines. There are many types of power poles and towers. Each is designed to carry specific line voltages and power over varying terrain or structures. Substation Basics Substations provide a localized area to split, monitor, and distribute various required voltages to utility and other power distribution lines. They are an important part of the grid and are of great concern when considering grid efficiencies and losses. Power correction and other efficiency requirements are considered with the design of these stations. Monitoring systems send power information such as noise, brownout warnings, and loading effects for each branch to company stations. Switches are used to shut down power or to act as a selector, diverting power to other areas of the grid as required. This link below will direct you to a YouTube video showing one of the phases of a high voltage switch not successfully breaking connection. This causes a large arc as all of the voltage of the line is dropped across the switch. This helps to illustrate the dangers of these substations and how they are used to switch very high voltages. Distribution lines deliver power to industrial, commercial, and residential areas. As you may know, power is equal to the product of the source's voltage, that is like its electrical pressure, and the current flow being drawn from it. So power equals voltage times current. Remember the power line width, or diameter, is sized according to the maximum current flow requirement. The higher the maximum current required, the larger diameter the wire must be. Since alternating current sources can be used with transformers, the electrical power can be stepped up in potential, that is to say it's made into a higher voltage, so the electron current flow requirement will be reduced, because power, which is what's being utilized by customers, is the product of the voltage and the current. So again, if the voltage is made higher, then the current flow requirement is decreased in order to deliver the same amount of power. Basically, the transformer increases the pressure, so the flow quantity will decrease. This is all while leaving the overall power availability the same. This saves on wire diameter greatly. If electrical utility companies delivered this power to users at a safer low voltage, the wire diameter would need to be many feet in diameter to deliver the immense amount of required current. Because again, if the voltage was low, the current requirement would have to go up in order to deliver the same amount of power. So with this higher voltage, why don't linemen insulate the length of the wires for everyone's protection? To get an idea of this increased pressure, or higher voltage, Watch what happens to a stick after falling across two phases of a high voltage three phase distribution line. 
available here on this YouTube link. After watching this video, you definitely have an understanding of what's going on with this higher voltage. It would be nearly impossible to safely insulate the entire length of the wire from its surroundings by using a type of coating. The coating would need to be very thick in addition to being non-conductive. Even a somewhat non-conductive stick quickly succumbed to the high voltage potential as seen in the video. The high voltage forced it into conducting current for a short time. Since the coating would be very thick, it would also weigh a lot, and they would no longer be able to hold it on posts. It would be near the ground, which would all make it more dangerous. So rather than coating it entirely, they use large glass or ceramic insulators as standoffs on the poles. Also referring to the video, though the higher voltage saves on the wire diameter, it does make it incredibly volatile. Utility transformers, as well as other step-down power transformers, take higher voltages from these power lines and reduce them to a lower voltage level which allows the available current to increase. The utility transformer at right takes high voltage from the distribution lines and steps it down to a lower voltage for the halogen street lights, the bottom left. This is also very similar, if not the exact same, type of transformer used for residential areas. Oftentimes, multiple homes run off of one transformer. These transformers usually provide for residential customers 240 and 120 volts. Dangerous, but way safer than the higher voltage power lines. So the transformer has a low current going into it at a very high voltage and produces a lower, safer voltage with a little bit more current to the customer. A great amount of these transformers may be used along the same stretch of distribution lines. Notice the high voltage fuse that's circled above the transformer. This protects the rest of the grid in the event the transformer lights or light wiring should short out. Transformer basics. Transformers use what is called mutual inductance to step AC voltages up or down. They only function properly with alternating current since induction will only occur within a changing magnetic field. As you may recall from the How We Generate Electrical Power lecture. The step-down transformer takes the high voltage on its primary side and generates a magnetic field that is proportional to this waveform. The magnetic field builds up with this being north and the bottom being south and then as it changes polarity the north and south magnetic domains switch and when the domains switch the same thing happens on the secondary. Since the secondary has a lower number of turns and as you may also recall from the video it will pick up less EMF. So the secondary will basically mock the primary's frequency and waveform but the voltage will be reduced and current will be increased. The primary has a high number of turns with a smaller wire gauge than the secondary. The secondary will have a low number of turns and larger wire diameter. So you can think of the primary as being high voltage in, low current flow. It generates a magnetic field that the secondary picks up and the secondary can produce a high current so you can utilize a good amount of current from the secondary coil and it will be at a lower voltage. The step-up transformer is the opposite. Its primary takes in a lower voltage but a higher current and steps the voltage up to a higher voltage with lower current. An example of step-down transformers would be of course the utility transformer 
which is similar in construction. It takes the high voltage from the power lines and steps it down to 120 and 240 volts on the secondary. Another would be an AC power adapter and a power supply. A neon transformer is an example of a step-up transformer. It takes 120 volts or 240 volts AC and will step it up to uh, around 15,000 volts AC. Remember that the primary will be using a great amount of current and a lower voltage and it will produce a higher voltage but with less maximum current on the secondary. Transformers have different core materials depending on their application and the frequency involved. Some transformers have multiple coils for multiple voltage inputs or outputs and remember these coils are actually coated with a thin layer of enamel and though it looks like bare copper it is not it is actually has a thin layer of insulation around it here's an example of a step down transformer with the case removed the primary terminals are shown here and here and the wire basically wraps around this iron core and then to the other terminal and the secondary coil is wrapped around the same core which is uh, almost a rectangular shape it is actually larger wire and then goes to the other terminal so this would be the primary terminals where the higher voltage would go in and it would be a low current draw as it goes through a lot more wire and would it creates a magnetic field that the secondary coil will pick up the secondary coil is a larger wire diameter and since it has a smaller number of turns in the same amount of area it produces a lower voltage but will allow for more current to be drawn Remembering that power is voltage times current, the power used at the input is ideally the same as the power available at the output. So the power into the primary is roughly the power used at the secondary. So if this is a 10 to 1 transformer, that is a 10 to 1 ratio between the number of turns, then the primary, if designed to connect to 120 volts, would step the voltage down to 12 volts on the secondary. As an example, if the device being powered by the secondary coil demands three amperes of current then the primary coil must be drawing 0.3 amperes from the voltage source that way 120 volts across the terminal multiplied by 0.3 is the same amount of power on the secondary which would be 12 volts times 3 amperes thus power in is power out and would be 36 watts. If you've ever used an older style AC adapter, it is a black box that just plugs straight into an outlet. It seems slightly heavy. That's because of this iron core and that helps the magnetic field strength become stronger and the overall efficiency for that given frequency, which is 60 Hertz, to transfer better as, it, as iron has a high permeability. basic protection and monitoring of the grid oftentimes on metal structures the framing will be grounded to a ground rod that goes deep within the soil so it's for lightning suppression and also to prevent it from becoming electrified in the event of a fault there are also power line fuses these are used for short circuit conditions sometimes overload conditions during a short circuit event the glass tube will actually break off of its clasp and will need to be reset if it doesn't destroy it. These are to prevent short circuit condition in the grid. Also monitoring stations that are affixed to poles such as remote power monitors are used to provide data for the power lines, the transformers, for power usage and other local grid factors such as noise. This information is sent wirelessly to power plants and utility companies. Not a lot of areas have remote power monitors and I, I do not have a picture of one. And this is to try to make sure that the grid is balanced properly with having accurate real-time data on what the grid is doing and how it's being used. 
Linemen are a large part of wind farm installations. They are required to survey, design, and build all structures pertaining to the linkage of towers by power lines and collection at specially designed substations. These substations are constructed to collect electrical power, monitor power penetration from the wind farm, and to connect or disconnect from the farm's power lines when necessary. They cut these tubes and mount all insulators and stands. All of these structures come in as beams and tubes. They construct all of these and cut it all on site and install transformers. I will discuss the wind power substations in the next lecture. How power is delivered to homes and industries. This crudely made drawing shows how power is distributed, transferred, and divided up to industries and businesses and residential areas. So here we have a coal-fired power plant. It's taking in large amounts of coal, also using water to produce steam for the turbines. That electrical power is sent to the transmission substation or another type of substation. And it is distributed through long distance lines, which are 120 to 350 kilovolts, the larger towers being 200 to 500 kilovolts, and also through other types of towers, which are 50 to 170 kilovolts, similar to this. After running a great distance, it runs to the, the distribution stations, where it branches off to other local areas and commercial areas. Here we see a high voltage three phase line, approximately 44 kilovolts. And the three phase lines are being branched off, stepped down using transformers, and then ran down risers for high voltage delivery to large industries. Also, power is being dropped down from the three phase line to another switching and distribution substation, where it will branch off to the residential area this line being a three-phase line for use with maybe small factories other places like that and finally to the residential area where it is either three-phase or single-phase around five to thirty kilovolts and it runs along streets and is stepped down by transformers that oftentimes run two or three houses so there's a utility transformer here's another for direct burial may go to a pad mount transformer instead and goes to the residence. So that's to give a basic understanding of the grid and how the home is tied into it as well as businesses. Terms for this lesson distribution lines and poles, grid monitoring equipment, grid protection, peaking systems, power correction, substations, switches, and transformers within substations, utility transformers and transformers, uh, the general knowledge of transformers, transmission line towers, transmission lines and their purpose, and utility transformers specifically. Should be done with the reading or close to it, and the Module 5 Lesson 1 quiz will cover the reading and the text and also this PowerPoint lecture.